I join the Home Secretary in tri making, giving tribute to the bravery of the victims who have come forward, but we have to face up to the further evidence that this case has brought up of appalling failures in the police vetting and misconduct processes that are still not being addressed by the government and are not being addressed in this statement. And I would say to the Home Secretary that given the scale of the problems, not just in this case, but in previous cases as well, her statement is very weak and it shows a serious lack of leadership on something that is so grave and affects confidence in policing as well as serious crimes. We've seen repeated failures to respond or take seriously allegations of violence against women by a serving police officer, by other serving police officers, allegations of domestic abuse not taken seriously in the vetting processes, and in this case, a failure to suspend, for example, a failure to suspend David Carrick when rape allegations were made in July 2021, even though the Met Police knew there had been domestic abuse allegations two years previously, a misconduct process that concluded there was no case to answer despite the repeated alarms being raised, a full vetting check not triggered, and David Carrick's permission to carry firearms restored. And most shocking of all is that this happened at the height of the alarm about Wayne Cousins and the murder, the deeply disturbing murder of Sarah Everard. And this undermines confidence for women, confidence for victims, but also for police officers who are working so hard, and especially for women police officers yeah. who may themselves have reported misogynistic abuse, and for officers who are doing excellent work every day to tackle violence against women and girls and know that confidence in that work is being undermined. Yeah. And there has been a lack of leadership from the government on police standards for years. Yeah. After the truly appalling murder of Sarah Everard by a serving police officer, Home Office Ministers promised change. The then Home Secretary promised to set up processes that would prevent this happening again. And that has badly failed. There are still no legal requirements on vetting. Forces can effectively do what they want. They don't even have to check employment history and character references, and some don't. They don't even have to interview people beforehand. And when the inspectorate came up with damning conclusions that hundreds, if not thousands, of police officers who should have failed vetting, including corrupt and predatory officers who have committed, including officers who have committed offences on indecent exposure and domestic abuse, are still in the job, the policing minister refused to even make it a requirement for police forces to follow the recommendations of the inspectorate. They just shrugged and said that it was a matter for police forces to follow. There has been no response to make this compulsory to follow vetting guidance, no uh, requirement to make it compulsory to follow the reforms. And all we've got in this statement is a continuation of existing Angelini review and a new review, another one on dismissals, which I welcome because this ha there are concerns that the dismissals uh, process has become more difficult and has become worse since well-intended reforms were introduced but have not worked as intended. So I welcome that review, but it was announced in October and it still hasn't started and all the Home Secretary has done is re-announce it today. And some of the things that police forces have been doing to tackle misogyny or to increase diversity, to improve their response to communities and to crime, the Home Secretary has dismissed as woke, even though they are about tackling some of the most serious crimes. And it's about to how seriously they tackle violence against women and girls more broadly, where we know that the prosecution rate, the charge rate for rape, has dropped to a shameful 1.5%. It has dropped by two-thirds over the last seven years. And again, Home Office Ministers promised that tackling violence against women and girls would become part of the compulsory strategic policing requirement. It has been reported that that has not happened.